the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Welcome back to Queen of Embers, episodes 29 and 30. I almost actually wasn't able to count right. I was like, if he's like, three, two, one? I can't remember what it was. There it goes. Uh, I'm your game master, Daniel Fox. These are the playtesters, the cult, the people who made Swine or made Gash Awesome. And now Queen of Embers, double yeah. thumbs up, soldier. Yeah. Uh, so, um, we took a little break, but uh, those who are watching or listening... Well, we'll tell the difference. That's right. They'll never you have know. No we'll idea. Because we're so far ahead. <laughs> so it's funny. I was actually writing today. So I get paid to write uh, at work. Sweet. So I spent half a day working on Queen of Embers. And I was looking back. I was like, oh my gosh, we're only in chapter three. And there's seven more chapters <laughs> ahead of us. Sorry, chapter two. Or chapter three. chapter three. No, chapter three, you're right. Chapter three. Yeah. Lots of crazy so like, yeah, there's some, you have seven total chapters. A lot, a lot ahead of us. So cool. I have a feeling we're probably going to be doing this until it being snowing. Probably. Mm. Yeah. Well, Not a bad thing. It's, it's good that it'll be play tested. It'll no, be fun. Just, plus, we'll get to third professions. That's always sweet. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think that's a, a reality yeah. mission. you got to not die for that to happen. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of death, what happened last game session? And you'll forgive me, because I don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> Shit. Between starting a new job and going to Chicago and Adam almost dying. Uh, wrestling. For a while, two weeks. Yeah, and he's not kidding. Helping me get a suit. <laughs> What's that? A suit. Helping me get a suit. That's right. That's right. Suit shopping. Suit of yeah. Yeah. Wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Walter. Yeah. Yeah. So, we took a couple, week, a couple weeks break. Um, Kay, do you recall where we left off? I literally can't here. believe it, but We're I wrote two notes you. from last time. So it's, uh, we went back to Talos and met with him, and I know oh. I screwed up talking. Mike's got it. Okay. There you so, go. At least I got that started. Okay, so what happened was, is this is the fallout of the street fight that happened, right? So there was a street mm -hmm. fight, and there was Nick's batshit crazy shit that Warren. happened. Warren. Warren, yeah. Yeah, Warren stuff. No, nope, you. Yeah. Street fight. Street fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Round one, fight. <laughs> I got a gun. I took one out, blinded. Jump on. Right. Uh, <laughs> Your horse took one out. So we had to... Uh, horse. We had to account for ourselves with the uh, Lieutenant Reich. Reich. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Hasn't around for Everybody one. lied besides him. Oh, yeah. Well, I actually just said, I ain't gonna say shit until the boss says shit. Yeah. Yeah, so there there was a lot of tension. He's like, what the hell's going on? You guys need to lay low, is essentially the gist of it. Like, you need to go lay low. Oh, uh, that's right, yeah. Lay low. Either, lay low. I mean, he's like, you can do what you want. My suggestion is you lay low, and I will help you do so by getting us in contact with someone in Slum's Row. That's right. Yeah. And so... That was... The dire straits. Dire straits. Okay. Dire straits. Dire straits. And, I got, and I, got, I gained a contact... But before we went to Dire Straits, we went to, um, what's her name? Andor the Wise Woman. Andor the Wise Woman. And we got, uh, who, who needed healing? Yeah, we got her, her healed up, and then there were some golden sutures! Yeah. Oh, God. I got healed up. Wait, oh, oh here, here we go. Here we go. Oh, God. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Uh, I healed my grievous wound from, like, the, the fourth episode? The sixth oh, episode? Oh, yeah, we're right here! here. That was like we're on no episode more 29 now. <laughs> it only took the entire <laughs> game so far. Alright. <laughs> Jeez. So we get set up at the slum row, uh, and then we ended up decided to go well, say hi to that. Before that, we, we, uh, oh. we had a... Warren had a a talk with uh, Andorra yeah. about his possession, and uh, she ended up giving him a talisman. Talisman. Andorra the chicken. And oh. said, hey, you owe me later, <laughs> basically. You owe a witch. Yeah. That's right, so you have a talisman to help ward away the mm -hmm. um And I also have to draw back, uh, beholden to a witch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's nothing. No, it can be D. No big deal. <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was all that your character. Your character got the contact. Yep. Yeah, and I got high and remembered something about a Zeppelin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is really ironic if you think about it. But. <laughs> Get high as a kite for a Zeppelin. And then Warren talked us into going back to the talisman guy. Right, so, the candlestick maker. Yeah, and I <laughs> screwed up trying to be diplomatic, and he got mad at me and said that I was working for one of his competitors. Right. To which I said, yep. <laughs> You're right. You're yeah, right. You so, then you, so then you burst in and... That's where we started. Warren led his way well, into the into the house, and he found what? Whoa, Warren and who was those? Boss three? man. Yeah. I'm, I'm downstairs doing Warren. look at. Oh, that's right. We're up the stairs. Yeah. We went. We're trying to distract him. Yeah. Open the door. That's where we stopped. Yeah. The, yeah, you stopped. Well, the door. I opened the door simultaneously. What's his name? Comes in, and I'm like. No, I thought you guys got into what the room. There was, there was, we got in the room. There was like a decomposing body in, in, the, in tub. the tub, covered yeah. with all the candles and all the wax, like, freshly dead. Warren starts freaking the hell out, and then something clicked. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I say, oh yeah. And Elisa was getting dragged out by her collar. So remind me, remind me who was inside the house, the candlemaker's house. I'm downstairs with the lookout. No, we were outside. Those two went up. Oh, we got dragged out. Yeah, we were outside. We were trying to trick him. Like, oh, how do you make these candles? Blah, blah, blah. Get out of my house! Be gone! He slams the door. As the two of you are out back, facing the Bastards River. It's it's early day, if you recall. Yeah. Like not even noon at this point. And the two of you are inside. And were you both upstairs? Yeah. That's right. And as you open the door to the bathroom of Candlemaker's house, you can see that there's a corpse, freshly slain, kind of nestled inside of this old copper tub, where you can see a number of unspent candles surrounding the lip of it, and tallow kind of has, has kind of hardened around the edge of it. The, um, the coal pit beneath of it is not lit to warm the water. You pull away, revulsing in horror at this, as you hear the candle maker downstairs. Be gone with you, out of my shop! Slams the back door. You can hear him throw the latch, too. <coughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you're downstairs, Banneker, and you are... I almost said Bannister. You're downstairs, and you're kind of perusing, uh, and so is Alistair, too. Yeah, you're, we're like... You're essentially inside this small candle maker shop, smelling all the potpourri and the, uh... The bed, bath, and be- it smells like a Bed Bath & Beyond. Or <laughs> Yankee Candle. So Yankee Candle. It's like a Yankee Candle in here. <laughs> it, it has all yeah, all so manner like cloves and burnt oranges and stuff that are put inside the tallow candles. The slow burning candles, they call them, right? The shopkeep comes inside as, as, as Alistair and Benneker, you're kind of downstairs and you hear this you hear this creaking sound on the second floor that you know is Warren and um, Terwin. But the shopkeep apparently has not heard it yet. You're like, <clears throat> uh, I have a candle in my hand. Yes. Is he coming near me? He he looks very flustered. I'm gonna do this. I got trip over and crack and <laughs> smash it all over him. Did so cause a distraction? <laughs> Try to yes. Okay. What about yourself, Alistair? Well, hell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll slip on my. Uh... Murder hat. <laughs> Murder hat. Yeah. I'm a very charming fellow. Yeah. You hear the uh, upstairs the the wooden planks are creaking. <laughs> I find a wall that I can like lean myself against, kind of slip my uh, the knuckle duster on without anybody noticing. Okay. Sit as still as quiet and then okay. keep a keen eye. Well, the good thing is, is you have caused a distraction, and Alistair allows you to whoa, use whoa, a stealth whoa. test. It's a secret test. All right. <clears throat> secret. Secret, secret. I got a secret. Don't forget your fortune points from your... Oh, yeah. I got them. Oh, I am. The fortune points use a little differently now, right? Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Just pull the volume of those that are already in your drawer out. And remember, you can use them to re-roll. You can use them to get an AP. And you can use them to immediately go up the damage condition or repair yeah, condition track after suffering damage or peril. Nope. No, they're not in there. I don't have any. Uh, what is your, what, how many fate points do you have? One. Okay, so you get two points. 
Yeah, you lost one. We got one. Yeah, yeah, coins. And so you, you get, we all, we're all using these little blue yeah, ones, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So as you use them, just put them back in the drawer. Okie doke. You get one pleasure number of fate points. Sounds good. Anybody get that? So yeah. you, in a secret test, you just want me to tell them, like... Just as a, just treat as a standard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Instead, there's still ranks with any talent you may have. Near agility. I rolled a 9. So I succeeded on a standard test by 50 points. But you want to keep that nine? Yeah. yeah. I don't know, buddy. You roll. see Alistair step back and he can even reach he reaches in his pocket and he kind of you can see the knuckle dusters like in the in the shadow of in the, the, the shadow of his pocket as he kind of loses it, just in case the shop keep this willowy looking fellow. I mean he look otherwise he looks unassuming. His hands are a little uh, bruised up, and you can see scabs on his knuckles. But he's very, very thin. I mean this man could easily be overpowered by anyone. He's very small. What you? What is the meaning of this? He comes over and starts. Get out of my shop! Pick on! Pick on with you! Well, no, 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 no! Hold on! I mean, I, I wanted to buy a candle. Your friends were very rude, he says, as he kind of pushes his glasses up his oh, nose and wipes oh. his finger in your face. I, I didn't come in with anybody. The woman of the man in this shop, for you to come back. You were supposed to show them candles or something out back. I'm here. You hear this creaking upstairs as you're bantering with this man at this point. Upstairs in the tub room, the two of you are... <gasps> uh, <clears throat> so Terran is shocked. However, he does have indifference, so he's not going to be derailed from this. He, he looks at uh, uh, Warren and he says, How many doles are in the... He's, he was going to whisper this, but I'm going to say it louder. Uh... How many dolls are in this place? One moment here. Your possession is triggered. Okay. What does Warren do? Warren, a moment ago, was very rattled, but now... Sighs for just a moment and, and collects himself. You wouldn't believe it if I told you, but quite a few. How far are you willing to go? Far enough to keep him from running out. How many girls are on the first floor? Damn it! On the first floor? How many did I remember? At least the front and back. Make it up. Okay. <laughs> I'd say... Warren is no longer in control. Six. Six bloody doors in one fucking building. Alright, it's, it's a fake. You may move your peril condition track all the way down, Hindered. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is a fake. You're gonna go and step in front of the front door of the shop where he's talking to Banneka. I almost said Banister. <laughs> you're gonna go. And you're gonna. You're gonna. You're gonna block the front door. I'm gonna block the back of the shop. I'm gonna talk to him about this. Talk to who? The shopkeep. About this. That's one way of doing it, I suppose. She's. It, Warren turns her, turns on his heel and starts walking out the other direction down the hallway. Kind of saunters, almost in a sense. His, his hips swinging back and forth. Huh. I didn't pass him that way. And uh, Terran will continue to uh, uh, walk like down the steps, <laughs> thinking that everything's okay. Okay. Clunk, 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 clunk. As you're talking to the shopkeep, he's suddenly kind of, What does it mean to get a spoiled lies? You're seeing his finger, he's jabbing it at you, he's shaking it, he's pointing at the back door. Alistair stepped to the side of the hearth and has slipped on the knuckle duster in case anything goes wrong. Terwin comes walking down the stairs. The two of you are out back facing the bastards over from the back side of the shop. And he is caught off guard for a moment. Trying, he's stunned, essentially, trying to take in what's happening. So as soon as Warren comes down the stairs, he continues walking all the way up to the shopkeep and immediately punches him right in the nose. Okay. 
<laughs> Whams! Right in the face, the shopkeep completely collapses to the ground. Problem like, solved. The shopkeep is lying on the ground and he doubles over and is just knocked completely out as he was caught unawares. <laughs> and now Warren just picks him up, hefts him over his shoulder and says, let's go. Whoa. I'm like Lisa whoa, listening whoa, to the whoa. door like, oh, huh? boss, what happened? What, what are you doing? It sounds like a whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, Okay, then. Listen. You can hear there's a scuffle going front. on inside. Yeah, you know really what? Try to... You know what? You want, open, you want to go inside from the front? Yep. Yeah. 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 You quickly run around the back, from the back side of the house, through this kind of muddy rut near the shore of the river, and back to the front and in a cold autumn day. You open the door, and you see Warren pick up the shopkeeper and slump him over his shoulder. Oh, you know what? That escalated. Well, that escalated quickly. Yeah. Uh, actually, <clears throat> I'd like to commend you, Warren. That was one of the best jobs you've ever done. Well, thank you. I mean, we'll get we'll get some answers out of this this uh, this guy here. <laughs> Pats him on the ass. <laughs> uh, well, we can do it here, or we can do it somewhere else. But I mean, this place seems as good as any, right? Now, is it that obvious that the accent is different? Yes. Um, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, wait. Um, Terran does look confused, but he's trying to still just keep control of the situation as he's mm-hmm. starting to get used to losing control of the situation, but not quite. Not quite Is there a yet. sign that's like an open or close sign? Yes. I'm going to turn it to close. You go to the window and you turn the sign to close and you draw the blind shut and yeah. you throw the latch so the the, the, ha- the the place is completely shut from the exterior. I think All that right. should uh, keep out anyone. So, listen here, folks. There's a boy upstairs. Oh, there's one here, too. No, a dead boy. Well, this one might be soon. No, he ain't dead. I said soon. Like... What? But what What do you mean by dead If you want to go and look for yourselves, you can. But I'll take a body for half it. decomposed and covered in wax, you know. The, the type of thing that you see on Slum Road normally. Wait, so... <laughs> a calm, cool confidence Warren is exuding. What, <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, so they're, they're making candles out of people? Well, you gotta make it out of something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, beeswax. Like none of yours. Tell just wet. Listen, that ain't... That ain't the point. Somebody's been murdered. And somebody's in the tub upstairs. And we's investigators. So there's only one body. So we'll... we'll that, that we know of. So we'll ruffle Mr. Candlemaker up here. Up a little bit. We'll find out what happened. Well, this is an easy win. We can just get... Brigandine. We have him apprehended. <laughs> There's no reason to get the Brigandine involved. I mean, you know, we didn't exactly come in here um, with good intentions in mind. Catch my drift. All you did was knock him out. Well, not a single blade was drawn. Not He's not cut. Brigandine don't come around Slum Grove. You're, you're going to have to come into the different part of the city. And around here, people take care of their own. Oh, yeah, it's not like yeah, I can get exactly wrong. Yeah. yeah, it's not like I can get Constable Reich to come what, down here. What are we, uh, we're, 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 hold on, though. We're, I mean, Reich to tell us to come here. It's martial law. Kind I think of everybody that. knows that we have a man on our team. Yeah. We're a team now. Right. Well, he's really good at this. Uh, you know, breaking fingers, pulling teeth. I see what you making mean. Making people talk. Leave it to the professionals. Right! Yeah! We have a professional for this. I see what you mean, yeah. And you're telling me there's a dead body here, three upstairs? At least just, one. Just the one that we know about. Maybe we should look around a bit while he's not here to stalk us. Mm. Well, first things first, let's tie this bastard up. You throw him into a wooden chair and lash his hands together with a bit of cloth and smells gagging. fucking horrible here. You don't smell anything. It smells like candles. Oh, it smells like candles, yes, I'm sorry. It smells like candles. It smells like 
<laughs> smells like Yankee Candle. <laughs> <laughs> it smells kind of horrible. It's like, like it's not like just like one type of candle. It's like fifty different types. A thousand feet away from this the store, one smells, you smell it. This one smells like chimney smoke, and this one smells like oh, this one smells like Christmas, and this one smells like pine. This one smells like lemon zest. This one smells like lavender. This one smells like Midsummer's Eve. We don't know what that is. You can only imagine that whatever whatever terrible. Uh, this this purveyor of of human of, of, of human candles made of fat. This probably is a good way to hide the scent. Uh, in that sense, you search the bottom floor, and it literally it would resemble a shopkeeper's place, a candle maker's place. There are candles hanging all over. There are a number of dried herbs and fruits back in the kitchen. He's chopped up that are kind of that have been sitting in water to simmer over a heat over heat. Um, nothing really unusual about the shopkeeper's place downstairs, but for those of you who go upstairs... Is there a cellar? No. No cellar? Okay. No, it's too close to the river. So, don't check. Yeah. There's always a cellar. Cellar door. What's, what's He's name? a cellar. Is that what's I'm going to... Uh, Donnie Darko? Yeah. I'm going to search for secret entrances. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'm going to search for secret compartments. Uh, I get a D kit. Oh, no, I'm not an elf. I'll take my time. Knock on the walls. Sorry. Every ten feet, I will search for traps. Yes. <laughs> uh, who wants to go upstairs? I'll go. I'll go. You guys got this. I'll I'll wait near the unconscious person. The two of them go upstairs. Uh, you're having trouble there. <laughs> what is it? Is there's like a body in a I, bathtub? You think yes, you, you think you can handle? You think you can handle him? I'll go if you want me to. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I, I got my man's back here. I was soon up. We're on, we're on the same page. He uh, beats people up and breaks fingers, and I watch. I'm better at diplomatic, and that doesn't necessarily involve pulling fingernails from people's hands. I'll go back up then. Okay, you should go because you know you you crime scene folks. You know you 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 all see different things than you, me. You you up in a search or you you stay there? There's no point in me being here. All right, what you doing? I'm staying down here. All right, good. Upstairs, the two of you go. Uh, three. 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 Back to the tub room. Every room. Tara and, and, um, and Warren pause before they open the door. There's kind of a... It's a great thing. Just prepare yourself. All right. <laughs> you open the door. You have a difference, don't you? Uh, impervious mine. Oh. Uh, or, no, I, have a, I do have a difference as well. Oh, okay. you did. Well, you behold a, a scene that you can only, uh, you know, you can only the worst thing you could possibly imagine there. Clearly, like, some indigent from the street was scraped up from Slum Row, brought into here, slumped into the tub, has yet to be treated, in a sense, to make fat from the fat, or make candles from his fat. His legs have not been chopped yet, but he is being prepared to be washed. And then perhaps you can imagine only the worst of the the, the, the worst of of, uh, of ways you could treat a body. Uh, truly necromancy, the ter- terrible, absolutely terrible. This this is how the uh, people make their living on Slum Row. We will uh, we will show this candle maker the same mercy that he showed this poor man. Whoa, whoa! Listen. Justice is one thing. I mean, I'm, I'm not the candle maker. So. And so, there's a difference between justice and putting him in a liquid bath as well. I don't want to do that. We'll do it quicker, I see. Yeah. If it comes to it. While they are discussing what precisely is going to happen to the candle maker upstairs. Downstairs, the man begins to slowly... Were there any ledgers or anything like that? Uh, yeah, shopkeep's ledger, but nothing save for that. Because I'd be kind of curious to see... Nothing that says we, I collect dead bodies. Well, I mean, you might use some sort of code to indicate a body as in some sort of... Import. Would you like to take the, the shopkeeper's books? Yeah. Okay. Uh, put it on your character sheet. Uh, put um, James Tallow's books... Because we also know that he was involved with the kidnapping of the kids, right? Well, That's why we're here. So. And I have the ability to look through ciphers. So. Yeah. Okay. So, shopkeeper's books? Yep. 
James Tallows specifically. Please, that'd be great. So, the three of you are downstairs while they are upstairs. The shopkeep begins to awaken. He can't speak because his hand, his mouth is bound. The very skinny, thin man, his glasses are broken and lying on the ground. Thank you. Um, and he's struggling against his bonds. Good news is, seems like you got yourself a, uh, a source of income to do that, what with uh, some of your, uh, your side business and what I hear. Might be going on upstairs. His eyes are watery because his, his nose is kind of red and black at this point. He's got bruises beneath his eyes forming one bloodshot eye. So I think anybody left in this building besides yourself can tell you there is nothing I like really a lot more than breaking noses and teeth. But I'm willing to forego that, assuming when I take this gag off you decide not to, uh, not to try to make an amount of noise that I find uh, irritating. He no. shakes his head no. <laughs> I think we've come to an arrangement then. I'll reach out to like undo his uh, his gag. <sighs> his spittle as he's trying to water it, get his mouth a little wet. Oh, my nose! Yeah. I'm afraid he kind of broke that too. <clears throat> what are you to do with me? He says nervously. I'm gonna give you some advice for the next time you have a uh, gag in your mouth to try not to breathe yourself so heavy that you pass the fuck out. Mm. In the type of work you're in, you're gonna have this happen more than once. So, I would suggest you either find a new line of work or you get used to it. One of the two. You can let me go. Well, I don't think so. Please, I've, I've got money. Oh, I've got a lot of it. I'm certain that you do. You're gonna need it. Where's that money? I'm not telling you unless you agree to let me go. He says. I'll agree to let you go. But the boss man may say something completely different. So I can lie to you right now. Oh, you're not the boss man? Who's the boss? He's speaking to him. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I've got money. I've got a lot of it, he says. I'll give you, I'll give you whatever you want. He pleads. You wouldn't give me nothing. We'd take it if we wanted it. Yeah. I think they're beyond that position. What, you think I just put it beneath my floorboards or something? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's foolish. Well, how foolish are you then? Well, I've taken protections. I have got a man coming by. He's gonna check on me every day. He works with me in Slum Row. He's gonna be by. What time is it? He's looking toward the window. Soon! Soon! Yes! Yes! Soon! <laughs> the blind. <laughs> soon. Well, sounds like you're gonna have a pretty bad day then. Make an interrogation <laughs> test first. Uh, your this, <laughs> what is your. Uh, so he's probably. We just knocked out. So his, it's probably a routine test for you right now. Alright. I have a 55% chance to succeed. I rolled an 87. I did not succeed. Should we roll that? Sure, why the heck not? Let's make this happen here. Magic fortune. I'll give you the fun factory token here. Yeah, put it away. (laughs) Yeah. You put it away and I take one out. (laughs) Alright, let's see how we do. We got a 58. Still failed. Aww. No. Hang by it. He's gonna be fine. He's gonna be. He's big. Big as an ogre. Yeah? That's right. You think he's as big as me, you reckon? Bigger, even. You barely think? fits to the door. What about, uh, you he's, think he's as big as me plus the other 
So how do you... Six people I got with me. How do you think I'd do my business in slumber? I wouldn't do this by myself. I mean, look at me. I've got people, you know, and I pay them well. Try a little stand to look for them. <laughs> What's that mean? Uh, I'm charm him into... He's charmed to intimidate. I'm a charming fellow. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, dude. Okay, go ahead and make a charm test. This will be standard. Is he outside of my social class? I know he is. He's yeah. a scum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a um, 87% chance. That's I rolled really 62. That's rolling good. Yeah, that's good. Well, we can talk this through, I'm sure, he says. Well, see, my friend, he's into breaking things, and I'm into, you know, telling people how it is. There's six of us. There's one of you. Your mate comes by. He's just going to be tied up in a chair next to you, too. You think he's alone? I really don't care, because you see him, and you've seen everybody else. My one man came down and punched you in the face and knocked you out a few minutes. You got dead bodies upstairs. You're making candles out of dead people. And uh, let's talk about this a little better. You can give us your money. You can tell us about the snakes. And when your boy comes, you can send him the fuck away or we kill you. That's pretty much it. This is how simply it gets. We're happy to service you. You're happy to service us. So you're robbing me. No! I need information. You kill people and make them out of candles. We're all winning here. So I... So what? An, an exchange, then? You could call it that. I don't really have much of a choice, he says. You don't! That's the <laughs> wonderful thing about this! Everything about it, I win! Isn't that great? It's pleasant! Well, how am I going to guarantee you this is all going to work out for me, too? I mean... See, the thing is, is I don't really care <laughs> if it works out for you. I'm only in it for me. <laughs> I mean, look at my charming face, look at my Andal build. Uh, I'm just a pleasant to be around, and you're just not. So, <laughs> let's continue this conversation, and you tell me what I want to know, or he starts hitting you. It's really <laughs> not that different than what we were about to do. Well, you need to at least let my bonds go so we can have a conversation. You can't... No, thank you. You can't just leave me in this damnable chair! I can leave you in there, and again, if you speak any louder than that, we can jam that uh, dirty cloth back in your mouth. Ah, uh, oh, there we go. Now, why don't you tell us about the snakes? What do you want to know? We know you work with them. What? We know that they kidnap people and put them into slavery. We know, I guess, they must kidnap people and put them into tubs and make candles out of them, too, now. They don't do any of that. That's, 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 that's just, nothing to do with them. That's just you. Just a pleasant fellow who kills people in the streets and yeah. puts them in the candles. Not really worth anything anyway. I mean, it's people just I won't go occupying and just, just taking away money from me and my taxes, and I pay the guilds, and and they just live on the street and get to beg for money, and the city puts them up in housing. I well, it's just wrong. Well, it, nobody will miss them. Nobody ever misses them. I never get reported. I actually don't disagree with you. I mean, don't understand it. me. But the problem is, I got him. And I got a boss. And they really don't like you because you're putting people in tubs and making candles out of them. I don't care. I want to know about the snakes. I especially want to know about the leader of them snakes. Look, you got to believe me, it's... They have a way of putting people to work for them. It's not like I had a choice in the whole thing. You don't have a choice right now either, so... I'm not culpable for those children. I would never touch a child. I'd never do that. Probably because there's not enough fat on them. Alistair, will you show him exactly what we mean by he hasn't had a choice? I don't think he's really understanding how uh, this, this game of you and I work. I'm... Good cop, you're bad cop, or constable. You're constable, that constable. <laughs> I'm really afraid that uh, he's quite serious, you know. Well, it's all right. I'm a merciful man. Are you a, uh, you a right-hander? I promise to only break the fingers on oh! your hand to start with. He kind of 
is trying to jump back in the chair and he can't seem to get anywhere because his legs are bound together too. At this point, you all come downstairs. Tell me you found nothing else. So what's he said? Doesn't seem to happen. They're trying to break my fingers! You don't seem to have much to hide upstairs. So, what's in that noggin? What's that? No, no, no. Would you like me to ask any questions? You just think he's going to stay straight. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before we start carrying on, I want to know what Spence said. Yeah, what you want to know, we'll get to it. All he right? says just that so patience. the body upstairs, that's his side business. He's got a mate coming by that helps him kill people. He doesn't kill them, care about the indigents because they're stealing his tax money mm-hmm. or some nonsense. He but pays the guilds, they live off of him. I don't know. He's he's scum. Hey, so. so he's about he was about to tell us about the snakes. Oh. And about your friend. Oh. Oh, so you decided to keep both hands? Uh, he wasn't gonna do that in that order. He was gonna oh. find himself a uh, he was gonna scream about uh, and whine about his fingers first. He was gonna do that, so uh, give give Alistair some time. Are you the boss man? Yeah. Oh, thank God. Look, we can strike a deal here. I'm a very rich man. I have a lot of money in this place. A lot of stock in Slumro. So you have a lot of money, literally, in this place. Well, not here. I'm not that foolish. I have investments throughout the city. Oh, how foolish are you? What do you mean? You said you're not that foolish. I keep petty cash. You can take it. You can have it. It's it's under that floorboard there. Right there. Right to the left. To the left. Right there. Right. right in front of the hearth. A loose floorboard. Right there. You see it? You seem awfully eager about us removing that, that floorboard. So, what was it What was it that he wanted to know? Or what's the answer? Right-handed or left-handed? Well, you're right-handed or you're left-handed. Both? Well, then I guess just break both fingers. Nice. It doesn't matter. Then. Or you can start with the toes. Okay, so you, we're on a good start. You answer the question from me. And because I appreciate it, we're going to let that one slide. Because if they're asking you what hand, you, what hand you prefer, I know it's already fucked up. So, this is me showing good, good, uh, will towards my fellow man, hey? So we were talking about the serpents. We were talking about the Vipers, yes. The the vipers. vipers. Serpents, vipers, and... Alright, so... Yes, tell the us, snake. Tell us about the vipers. Like this. Yeah, tell us about them. And, and, and Drew, since you were about to tell us. The, the Pict, yes, the Pict. Uh-huh. He and... He and those rat bastards, they... Well, they steal... They steal children and other people away from the city. I mean... Children are a different matter. I mean, these indigents, these beggars in the streets, these vagabonds, these vagrants, I mean, they're worth nothing, but I would never harm a child. I don't believe he's giving us information we don't already know. Hang on, he's getting around to it. Slowly. Oh, Seriously, no. that's that's all I know. They, the, the Druze and the, the Pict, the man, the Pict, and the others, they, they make us do things we don't want to do. We inform on the brigandine and others who pass through the streets. What else do you see? You see, right now, it's about a matter of control, which which he's taught me something about. He's trying to get whatever control he can back. And if you let him get a little bit back, then he thinks that everything will be okay. This negotiation tactic. See, control, and I'll kick him over. (laughs) Yeah, he falls backwards. Oh, my hands! And then you remind him that they don't have it. Well, I assume that if he has friends coming, he's just trying to stall at this point. Oh, good point. I'm not stalling. They're gonna come by soon. I'm telling you, right. we can work this out like like businessmen. Okay. It's the reason you should probably uh, speak faster. Yes. So I'll, I'll sit him back up. Okay. All right. Oh my head. Tell him about the vipers. You know something? They they. Where are they at? All over. They're all they up get, and down the Bass's River. How do they get in contact with you when they have you do these things? They they come and they they extort people around here for tax. We pay our tax and they keep us safe. Ish. Okay, so they these racketeers. That's the big word for it. Well, from a legal perspective, I suppose yes. But we, you know, we we, we, we share secrets about the folk who come back and forth in some row. I mean, that's just. What we get paid to do. Like what? In exchange for protection. 
Yeah, hopefully. What secrets? So, so the comings and goings of people. Brigandine, uh, I have a lot of rich clientele who come in and out of this place, you know, from Bessiah Square. And I saw that we might be of use, but... Let, uh, okay, let's focus here. So, you give your secrets to the Vipers, and one of them, one of these Vipers is gonna be showing up soon, right? Not a Viper, a hired hand. Uh, I, you, I mean. An hired hand <clears throat> for the Vipers. No, mine. So one of your hired hands is gonna be coming by to check on them. Yeah, of course, it's and, almost midday. And if he's in danger, then what, they're gonna run into the Vipers? No, he's gonna break, he's gonna bust skulls, he says. He'll get his, he'll get his at the others, the other street folk. You're the Ferris Semi. They'll come here and they'll bust skulls. Okay, so, Ferris Semi. So when they come to check on you, how many is they? One, but okay, there's right. a bunch of Ferris Semi around here. And they're they're all my payroll. So here's what's gonna happen. Somebody comes knocking on the door. Are these Sylvia's? You're gonna you're gonna say come in. Okay. One, you're gonna do the same thing you did here. So. That buys us all the time in the world that we need. What? So your plan of stolen isn't gonna work. Well, he's gonna be here soon, and then you're gonna be in trouble. The Corvinos will, will break your legs. We're not worried about Sylvia. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, if you do anything to alert someone of the danger you're in, your life is forfeit. You're gonna be eating gruel for the rest of your life. This is all just a terrible game. Just get on with it. Do what you're gonna do. Alistair's gonna break all your teeth. So... I told you all I know! No, have you really? Okay, well, what about this body upstairs? What are you doing with it? You know what I was doing with it? No, I don't. Rough gonna... indigenies. Useless, just... On the damn corner, every day, begging for coin, every single morning. Can I have some coin, sir? Shaking his damn cup at me and others. So what good is he soaking in the tub if he's dead? Well, he can be... Used other ways. But no one's gonna miss him. Where were you last night? What do you mean where I was at last night? You were gone, I was here. Oh, oh, that's, that's, that's really back in. I want to know. Uh, I know you want to know. Like I said, let's be patient. There's some shit happening around here that needs explaining. I don't know what you're I talking about. I understand. You were gone. I broke your window out. I walked up the stairs. I went in the room with the body. There's no broken window. You can see right there. He looks across the way and the pain is completely untouched. Boy. You're lying. I broke You think it. I replaced a window over during the day? Sure. That's foolish. One. I was here. What? You need to be patient. This guy, this man This is the is... worst time to do this right now. This man is trying my patience. Let me handle it. Do you remember what I went through last night? You weren't... You were there for part of it, right? The part that I remember? I understand what you're saying. You have to trust me. Okay. Carry on. Uh, I forgot where I was. So, yes, what good is the body soaking, collecting? What? You know why? He looks around the can. He looks around the shop. No, I don't. Look at me. I wear this badge. I have these weapons. Do you think I use well, use I, these for soaking people in a pool? Well, I, I, at least I bury them. In a sense, I put them in the car knock when I'm done. Or, sorry, the, the Bassus River when I'm done. Okay, so you you, you soak them in a tub and then you dump them in the river. Why you soak them in a tub if you're gonna soak them in the river? No, for the fat off the off the legs and the cheeks, for for candles. So you take these fat and you use them for candles. That's right. So these candles here, these people candles. Yes, <laughs> he says, unsure how to answer. It's a lot of people. He handled out. The real question is, why was it when I stepped into that room last night, that body stepped out of the bathtub and attacked me? I don't know what you're talking about, he says. It chased me through the city. I don't know where I ended up. You are bombing. But that thing was a lie. You're a madman. I can see it in your eyes. You've had too much of the Madame Geneva, I say. Believe me, he draws even closer. I 
am not. This man is a hophead! You, surely you can't let him talk to me like this! We can book out a deal! No, I found out what I wanted to know. You it's his people turn now. for candles and you want to talk about men, but animals have more fat than people. Beef tallow. Right. But a person's gonna know when their cow's missing. They ain't gonna care about when a degenerate beggar goes missing. That's his point. I suppose. So. Seems like a lot more work. Not really. really. Inefficient. He, he tends to believe that you're up to something more nefarious than just making candles. No chromancy. You believe this madman? I believe that he believes it. You've been touched by the Leviathan's eye, for sure, he says. Touched by Penumbra. So you deny it. Deny what? That you oh, are a necromancer. I don't know what you're talking about, he says. I have no idea what you're speaking of, he's pleading. A wizard. I don't know what that is! I'm no wizard! I'm a, I'm a damn candle maker! I'm a businessman! You, you, you make the dead rise again and walk around. No, he says. What? That's preposterous! Well... He certainly had a ritual going last night, and he certainly got out of that tub. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. You're clearly barmy. You're touched, man. Listen, I, I, I watched him break the window, boss. I did watch him do that. Fine, fine. I replaced a broken window, yes. But this necromancy business, I'm, no, I don't do any of that. All right, if you, well, if you, you said that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my foot on him and tip him over tip again. Him. Oh! oh! He hits the floor once more with a solid, uh, clonk. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Damn it! All right. I think maybe My you need to start. Wrists. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna step over to him. You need to start telling us everything. You're not getting back off the floor until you start. Look. What uh, happened in the What happened in the bathroom? I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. I swear to the gods. I swear to the night father. I have so, no idea. So, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If he's going to lie to me about a window, he's going to lie to me about what she's doing with with this body. I told you I'm doing with the body. Fat candles. You're standing in it. It's business. Uh, I'm not a crowman, sir. Hey, Alistair. Hmm. I think you want to ask him if he's a necromancer. Candles can get out of a body anyway. I think you heard the man. I told him to a damn necromancer. Thank you. It's a wedding work. We need to know for sure. Well, I think that uh, just, if it was, he would need uh, he would need use of them hands, right? I think we've returned ourselves back to that subject. I think it's time. I think so too. He didn't tell me, so I'm gonna assume you're a right hander, and I'll still show you the mercy. I'm gonna break your left hand first. <laughs> He grabs the hand. You hear this? This kind of almost like if you're kind of pulling on a on a carrot, and then it's like oh, oh, pop, pop. Oh! You will gain uh, uh, one corruption for that. Hell yeah! All of you, save yeah. for Alistair, who will gain two. Yeah. Hell yeah, I will. <laughs> I'm still busy trying to. I'm get no! Necromancer! I swear it! By the martyr! Mercy! Ow! Oh. Well, let me ask you something, uh, if you don't mind, boss. I have an a question I'd like you to answer. Where are you getting these bodies? I know you said who they were, but who's bringing them to you? People I pay. Yeah. Lure them to the shop, promise a coin, a warm bed. And then we. Then I do my business, but I'm no no crumb, so I tell you. I think he's telling the truth. I think he's lying. I knew. I knew for certain that he wasn't killing him in the street himself. I say we burn he's the shop down. As, uh, he's soft as newly washed down. He can't do it. So no, I'm, I'm asking the I'm asking the expert here. You think he's telling the truth? About the necromancy? Yeah. Because he saw him break the window, and he's pretty sure he saw a body move. 
Can I do an eavesdrop test or something to try to see if I can tell the people I know? Uh, you can attempt a scrutinized test, but it's secret. Yeah. Secret. Well, I think he is telling the truth, or at least uh, thinks that he's telling the truth. Which is, uh, as you know from the last uh, few weeks, not exactly the same thing. No, I mean the kind of makeup. I know who you meant. Okay. And that's who I meant too. I think he thinks he's telling me. 62 and I got a 24. You want to keep it? Yeah. Because again, he's as soft as baby shit. I want to know more about them vipers. You You rolled a 62? No, 62 is my. Okay, you rolled 24. And I got 24. I want to know where we can find them, get that roost. They've turned themselves into body. Men ain't exactly in control of their own minds these days. No. If you think he's telling the truth, then... Again, your phrasing is important. I think he thinks he's telling the truth. Lisa, his physical tells seem true enough. Whether he's telling the truth or not is a different matter. In the sense that whether he knows he's telling the truth or not, as Alistair suggested. He's right. He's telling what he thinks is the truth. Why'd you say that? Well, if he if he isn't the necromancer, who is? Who ha- who has access to the shop? Who Nobody comes, but me. I, I'm the one with the key. And animates that body. I don't know anything about that. All right. Well, you still trust me, right? Well, I trust you. Okay. We're going to move on. And. We'll talk about this later. My question is, is how did he get all caught up in these kids? I told you, they, they, they we just report back to the to the vipers. We, they, pay, they, they give us protection in exchange. So you're the one that marks vague. the kids. Then. We watch the comings and goings of people in the streets. Uh, revered mothers, uh, brigandine, uh, other outsiders like yourselves. Mm. Seems to me he's been very vague with the information that he might have given the Vipers at any time to be able to do this. Also, any information he might currently have, if he's been watching, obviously he's still, correct? So has he told anyone of our comings and goings, since he did say we were out of the old knowing? That's my question. Is is what I want to know, and I'm going to leave it to you two to figure out. Because I'm about done with this. Alright. What I want to know is what he wants to know. What else can we get out of him in order to help find Drust? What else can we get out of him in order to, to figure out what's going on with the dealings with the children and with the, uh, with the orphanage? And the lady who was running the orphanage that is dead now. So. It's true. You leave. You. That's what I want to know. I want you to go ahead and ask, because I'm, uh, I'm getting a bit outdated. Mm. You just told me all I need to know. I don't give a damn what happens to him next. And Warren turns around. Well, I'm gonna grab a cup. I'm gonna do this with a candle. Do it a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. <laughs> you start sliding them onto the ground. Yep, just breaking them. Start breaking everything. Please, it's a valuable. He pleads. I know. I mean, how seriously? How many candles can you get out of a corpse? That is really interesting to me. But past that point, you heard what he wants to know. I've told you all I know. Is no, you haven't. The picked Drews, he. The, the, the put and squeeze on all of us. Mm. Squeeze. It's what information did you give him by chance? I told you, the comings and goings of Brigandine. That is um, once again far too vague for me at this point. Brigandine don't even come in here. Correct. Yes, they do. So why were they back and forth? Gods if I know. Which Brigandine from guys? where? The bastard with the spurs. So oh yeah? With the spurs. What's he doing in here in Slum Row? He's got a whole district of his own. Gods, if I know. Yeah. 
That's exactly what you're supposed to know. So, so what you're saying is that you literally went to a viper and said, there's a man walking around with spurs, and I don't know why. That is mm. the information you gave them for safety. That's that's right, he says. You are full and of And they didn't shit. get you in your spot right there? Drop a candle closer to him this time. But they're like, damn it! Look, let me go and I'll... I'll tell you what you want to know. Take the whole show. I'll tell you everything. I'm going to take the whole show, one of the shelves, and throw it. (laughs) The whole thing (laughs) shatters all over. You know, I actually have an idea. There happens to be quite a bit of wicks on this ground now, and I bet if we lit one... The whole shop would go up? Kind of a thought. I like the way you're thinking. Please, you can't do this. I'm a rich man. I'll give you anything. Mm, So is my family. Accidents happen. I'm going to go to a, a candle and start... Like cutting it down to where, like, I would guess about maybe like ten minutes worth is, mm-hmm. and then, like light it, sure, and go. Well, you got about that long to start telling us what we want before this place goes up. Yeah. <laughs> Grab the next candle. <laughs> you just cast this it. continues on for quite some time, and there's literally nothing else he okay. will be able to say yeah, at this point. I say like, I'll I'll do interrogation. I actually do have interrogation skills, but mm-hmm. there's we nothing we else need, I can we do learn. We don't from need him. to continue. <clears throat> Okay. We're playing it out yeah. if, if it's so, nothing. Yeah, if there's nothing, nothing to have here. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. This is the weird. <laughs> what right. do you want to do with him, boss? Open the door! I spent so much time here interrogating, it's now midday. Mid- James T- Tallow! Tallow, are you okay? Warren walks to the door, opens it up, and immediately punches the person in the face. Hold on. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> <clears throat> Person has initiative of. Uh, 17. Uh, Alistair, what's your perception bonus? Six. Okay. <clears throat> so, we're going to make opposed awareness tests. Okay. What does that sit down as? Uh, this. Visitor? Uh, visitor, yeah. Alright. So, can I. What else do I get? Yeah. Some sort of bonus, didn't you say? Did you write it down? I thought um, he handed you a card. So we're making what, what, what kind of tests? Or awareness tests? So possessed is in main gosh? No, uh, no, no, not you. I'm sorry, Walter, not you. Just is strictly for war. Main gosh. Ah. So treat it as, as a trivial test. Okay. Uh, you do get abilities. We haven't actually... You actually pinned them down already. Under... No, we haven't yet. We'll get to that, though. It's actually, okay. it, it varies, but mm-hmm. you're not going to find anything in there, is what I'm telling you. Is this we book? Need, no, we need to do this before the game, not during. Okay. okay. Uh, we won't worry about it for now, then. All right, so what, what's the... the open is the it door? Opposed, it's hold, opposed hold, hold on. Time out for a second, guys. He's at the door. For now, time out. Mm-hmm. We're going to do an opposed yeah. awareness test first. I don't, I don't need to do that. Beat everybody. It's not... Tim, hold on, please. It's an opposed awareness test between the person at the door and Warren right now. All right. So, oh, critical failure. Never mind. I'm right rolling. Okay. No critical. I rolled a 32. Okay. So Warren will start combat, and you all will get a surprise turn. To clarify. So, do you have something at the top of the initiative order? Yes. Smuggler. Which is what? I'm a smuggler. Put him up there. Uh, the we need to be sure to put Bannock up there twice from now on. Yeah, the banner will be uh, first, and then... Because I mean, Smuggler always got first. It's be, like, B1, and then we can erase it afterwards. Because after that, I go right back. Yeah, in. he goes right back to his normal. Very time. Sure. Sure, All right. So, here's what happens. So this is the surprise round? The do- yeah, the, do- the door opens, and you are not near the door. Keep this in mind. You're knocking over candles. So what would you like to do in your case, Banneker? How, how big is this place? Hey, as wide as this room, you guess maybe what, 15 feet or so? Okay, well, then I'll charge and do a knockout. Okay. You come forward and rear back with your hand. Wham! It's an easy, athletics, easy, simple melee test. Easy, simple melee. Or no, sorry, easy athletics, my apologies. Easy athletics. Okay. I have a 16. 
62% chance. And I rolled 58. Big guy. Bam! You send him spinning as he drops to the ground, his helmet plink, plink, clink, 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 rolling off into the into the middle of the uh, the uh, cul-de-sac. As this man with this kind of triangle-shaped dark curly hair and dark skin goes flying down the stairs and there's about four other certainly looking fair semi down there with a cart and over the cart there is a there is a big cloth cover. Warren, it's your turn. So he's... You could have rear back and suddenly you see that uh, that Banneker squeezes it and bam! Belts the man right in the face and he goes bouncing down the stairs. Yeah, I see the foreman down there. Yes. And I'll back up and shut the door. Okay. You step back to AP, <laughs> close the door and latch it. Terwin? Well, there's four of them out there. And they've got a dead body. Candles. For, for what? For those uh, triangle here people. Um, Ferris 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 City. Good. The Corvino game. You've got ten seconds. Okay. Counting down. Go and prepare my gun. Make sure it's loaded. Five. All right. Four. You're gonna you're gonna open three, the door. You're gonna let him in. We're gonna jump. Two. And uh, I will uh, pull my sword and my shield. Okay. Knock and then I'm gonna move to a place that's not. Uh, you can't knock an arrow. It's not your turn. I'm gonna move to a side of, to a side of the door and wait. wait oh, you say you're knocking an arrow? It's Bryce Randall, though. It's not your turn. We need to we need to follow the turn order here, guys. Two. Gentlemen, let's please follow the turn order. We're at Terwin's turn right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Terwin said you're gonna open that door back up and we're, you're gonna let him in. Okay. And then Terwin pulled his sword and shield and went to one side of the door, waiting for them to come in. Okay. Now, Alistair, it's your turn. Sorry, Alistair, it's your turn. My apologies. I'll turn to the uh, the candle maker and knock him out. Okay. Easy enough. Like he, you'll shut him down. He won't scream out at this point. It's only uh, one AP. You're already there. All right. Hold on to the rest. Anybody got any? Uh, we got any ideas here? Five, four, three, two. Moving on to Lisa. You have ten seconds. Okay. Uh, I am going Nine. to attempt to do an inspiring word and work on everybody. Or, uh, uh, are, are we not allowed to up? converse in combat anymore? Is that the thing well, yeah. that happened? So, surprise, we need to keep it snappy, you need to keep it moving. Uh, okay. You have ten seconds. Okay. We just want to keep it moving. Gotcha. So, uh, I don't know where I thought was. That's yeah. fine. Hold the door and don't allow them through. What's your current damage condition track? Current? Yeah. I am currently at. Uh, moderately wounded. Okay, so your no, test is going to be wounded. standard. Oh, it's going to be challenging. I did not make it. Okay. Want to reroll that? Sure. Let's go for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a critical failure. Oh, no! <laughs> well, do the thing. You, start to, you start to feel a little bit of pressure <laughs> as uh, the door is latched. She turns around toward you, kind of wide eyed, stammering. <laughs> you all will suffer minus one to damage or peril condition tracks. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. She will kind of botch it throughout the entire the entire no. scenario. You nope. have two AP left. Uh, I will hold on to this. Okay. Now, Banneker, it's your turn. On normal initial order, you still have surprise. Uh, the door is shut by Warren immediately. Uh, uh, leadership I'll step to the side. Knock an arrow. Okay. How many APs it cost to load? It costs one to load. Okay, cool. So that's two AP. Move the side of the door. Actually, this doesn't matter. Doors are right closed. You just got an arrow locked. Do you have a short bow? Hunting bow. Oh, perfect. Okay. Harper? Uh, are there any tables I can flip over? Not down here, no. All right, well, then I'm going to... Uh, Look to see. Uh, I think there's a. Well, I probably can't pick up a uh, shelf that was knocked over. Um, I'm just gonna pretty much take cover. Then uh, I'm gonna have my weapon drawn. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna take aim at the door. 
Okay. That's it. All right. And now, move into regular initiative. So, Warren, it is your turn. What are you going to do? I'm going to stand against the wall, um, with my back to the wall, and open the door, taking cover behind the door. I uh, can't take cover and open the door. Actually, I'm sorry. Clarify. Clarify so I'm for standing them. behind, the, like, the door opens mm-hmm. inwards, correct? Uh, yes, it does. So I'm going to stand my back to the door and just open the door and just hide behind it. Okay. You open the door. Any extra AP, I'll just bank for now. Yeah, you'll have one AP. Come on out, you bastards! One of them says. Terwin, now it's your turn. Uh, Terwin is going to look about and go, Listen, it was a fine attempt. Well, hold fast, people. We can do this. They gotta come in here if they want to get their... F- they gotta come in here if they want to get their friend. And uh, I'm going to uh, try and use inspiring words. Okay. Uh, what's your current damage condition track? I am unharmed. Okay, it's going to be routine. <laughs> okay. Uh, awesome. Be 58% chance. And a 24 will succeed. Okay, you may, you may offset your penalties now. Yay. <laughs> and then, uh, so I will bank the rest of my AP. Okay. Alistair, it's your turn. I'm sure she's not going to have to charge down these stairs. I'm not going to. So now you may speak no. in combat. Now that surprise turn is over. What's up? Uh, I'm going to get him out of the way. I'm like this. Uh, I'm going to take the candle maker out. Okay. Drag him back. The chair. I'm like, okay. get him like over to the side where he's not a liability. Okay. That'll be an AP. All right. Well... I guess we don't know what happens now. How, uh, there are windows that face them, like the blind shut facing that direction. I'm gonna That's right. get low. Okay. Make sure they don't throw anything through the window. Okay. And I'll wait. Wanna take cover behind the window? Yeah. Do for one AP. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Take cover one AP? Yep, take cover is yeah. one AP. Yep. Yep. Alright. Do some red dead to your shit. If you don't come out, we're going to burn the whole damn place down. I was planning says. on doing that anyway. <laughs> well, you'll be inside when we do it. There's five exits, you idiot. <clears throat> look out back, fool. As you look down toward the stairs, you can see that two disappear as they're running around the back side of the house. Or at least it's your turn. Uh, I am going to barricade the back door. It's already been locked. That's true. As soon as he's going to burn it down, they don't need the door to be open. We need to take them out. If they want to divide and conquer, let's go out there and fuck them up. You can hear a sound from behind the building, at least up. I just spent two IP to get to the door. Okay. Um... Then I am going to attempt to intimidate them through the door. That's not going to happen. No? You need physical presence. Oh, you have to have physical presence. No. Then, um... Yeah, they'll be able to see and hear you. Yeah, I got nothing. So take cover. I will take cover. Yeah, okay, you hunker down back behind back. the door. Smart. Panicker, what will you do? Yeah. Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> I'm going to step out. I'm not a fighter. I mean, I'm right there, right? You want to step out, out front of the, onto the porch? Nope, step out in front of the door. Okay. So, so I can see them. I mean, I don't know where I was Yeah, at. you can you can see directly down the stairs. At the foot of the stairs, there's a man just literally sprawled out on the ground. He, you knocked out cold. He's just going to bounce down the stairwell. Can I see out, any of the other ones? You can, actually. Uh, two of them break around the building, and you kind of lose sight of them quickly. But the foremost person and another person who's near the cart are still standing there. They're just kind of... Hands on hands on waist like this. They're wearing this kind of boiled black leather. Um, they kind of look like you can imagine like an olive skinned uh, Pharisee to look. Greasy hair, dark black eyes. I'm gonna say one thing, and then I'm gonna shoot, and kill you. If you know, Sylvia knows me. You should walk away. What's your name, friend? Maybe well, we do know you. Maybe we don't. You don't need to know that. But she knows who I am. Just walk away. 
You need to convince him of this. Go ahead and make a charm test. He's outside my uh, class. He is not. He is an aristocrat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. Aristocrat. He's an aristocrat. I still have a 57 here. And I roll with her. I think you should walk away, as I said. Either that or I'm going to shoot this arrow at you and I'm going to kill you. So, who cares about your men? He'll wait and look at you dead in the eyes. Let's have a conversation, friend. He'll approach slowly with his arms up like this. I'll step out to the porch. No violence is needed. So you know Madame Corvino. I'll take I'll step out so further so nobody can hear me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course I do. Francisco. He'll extend his hand. I think we need to uh Break this up. He looks over his shoulders. The candle maker's off now. You're not making much money off him anyway. Candles are all yours. Take them and sell them. Business is yours. We want nothing to do with it. We just want him. Then we do intend to bust up this place at some point. We had him in pretty deep with us. He was, he was Sylvia, quite a purse. Well, uh, there's a uh, when you uh, when you do uh, go in here and if you take it. Looking at the floorboards in front of the, the fireplace. Uh, it's yours. There's a reason why James Tyler keeps shop out here. Yeah, he's a gambler. I don't know about a gambler, but he's something all right. Well, dead bodies and the candles too. Maybe yeah, we know that. The two that are kind of standing side by side outside conversing, both facing the house at this point. Look. Here's what I say we do to make this fair. People go missing all the time in Slum Row. Sometimes candles burn on their own. You take uh, Mr. Tallow. Whatever you want to do with him. Let's spend the money. 60 fill. 60 for him. You can have all the money. Oh! Are you sure? Will you speak to everybody else? I don't care about the money. I care about the man. He owes me something more than money. Take him, he's yours. I'll throw you out the purse. Let's go inside. Please, after you. Just you? <laughs> Just me. Boss, put your arms down. We've made an arrangement. Oh, we have, have we? As uh, you hear the, the sword sheathing, that you hear me sheathing the sword. Uncock the hammer, yeah. put it back in. A man walks inside, kind of almost gliding as he's looking around. He is oiled, but he is he is with olive oil on his arms. The man is, he's a big fellow. He has a long triangular kind of blackish hair that's carefully curled with a long mustache that kind of comes up in two curls like some nefarious villain. One of his eyes, he has this kind of slash across his face that's been painted red. Oh, you did a bit of work to the place. Remodeling. <laughs> we need him to talk. He doesn't Mr. like to. Mr. Tallow. Oh, I see. He's asleep. Yes. He got tired. He got tired. Admittedly, did we... Tired. <laughs> the Corvinos do business with James Tallow. He does business with the Vipers, too, and you want to kill the Vipers, so I don't think that's really uh, too much of a... Well, doesn't matter, <laughs> does it? I don't know about killing the Vipers, but... Um, they are a thorn in the side of... Or they are a, a rock in the boot of everybody here in Durindal. Exactly. So, which floorboard, you say? The one right there, uh, I'll point it out. Right there in front of the hoth. He smiles. Hello. She looks toward... <laughs> Elisa. Hello. <laughs> he will glide his hands down to the floorboard and pop it up and not unlock his look toward you. Elisa maintains the stare. Oh. <laughs> well, he says he pulled up this small little trunk and sits it down on the side of the hearth. Seems Mr. Tallow has come into some riches. That puts it on his shoulder, this heavy little box about this size. Do what you will. 
Oh, that squares us. Tell Sylvia. Wait. He I says as he reaches in his pocket and he flips you a match. Hmm. All right. Nobody was ever here, right? I never saw you. <laughs> uh, Nine Father be with you, he <laughs> says to Elisa as he saunters down the stairs. Same. And like that, the situation is diffused. Yeah, you lied to me. I was not using my size. <laughs> <laughs> you lied about the window, too. Yeah. All right. What the hell are we going to do with him? Boss, Just that situation's now. over. Yeah, but they made off with the money. Well, I burned a lot of coin in that situation, too. Not the coin that came in that chest. Well... So let's, let's, this better be good. He needs to start talking more about the Vipers and we need to get some information out of him. And then we gotta burn this place. I don't think he's got anything left. Yeah. Because I made promises. I mean, when a man gives away his money, I don't think he's got much left. Yeah. All right then. I'll well, flip the top of the match. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're taking him with us, right? We're not killing him, are we? Oh, we're killing him. Sorry. Well, I thought we were going to let him burn in this place. I mean, he let all these other humans burn through candles. Uh, I mean... Your call, Captain. Listen. I was only going with uh, your your, your type of justice. I didn't do nothing to children. I'll lick my fingers and put out the match. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, the boss made don't like fire. No, that's the problem. I do like it. All right, he likes it too much. So perhaps he goes first. This yeah. group does believe in spontaneous combustion, I'm just saying. Listen here, listen here. So, who are the good guys? <laughs> yeah. Good is relative. I'm, I'm a bit conflicted. Well, you can do, you can, if you want to score some points with your man, Lieutenant Reich, go get him. But I burn a bridge. What bridge is that? That's none of your fucking business. Whoa. You don't have to react that way. It was just a question. And that was the answer. Fair enough. Well, if you're going to respond like that, this is obviously very important. I told you that. When you told me to stop. All right, right, right. Here's how. Here's what we. Now, is the deal to burn the place down or to kill it? Because that makes all the difference. Yeah, I don't think we're. Did he say to be able to kill us? He said just burn the place down. Yeah, he said. Didn't say something about taking. Well, I said he was ours. You said he was ours, right? Yeah. I traded the money. He has no more information about vipers. He did say technically he hasn't earned money in other places. Well, you wanted to burn this place down, didn't you? Oh yeah. Well then we just. Well, how about this you go place. take him to Lieutenant Rack? Is there? A, I. How close is the nearest buildings? Nowhere that's, near. That's, it is. Uh, this place is very close that's to what the. That's uh, you said. It's close to the river. The river. It's close, yeah. Right. It's an old cul-de-sac. We're not going to start buildings. a forest fire like we always do. I just don't want to burn down half a slum roll, basically. But yeah. I'm, not, I'm not exactly against justice coming to this man, but if we can, if we can get something else out of him, I want to. Let him sit in the jail cell for a while. Maybe he'll open up after uh, the cold nights. Well, <laughs> you see, <laughs> he also did mention something about money someplace else. That's my fault. Well, it's not like we got this, a place to keep him. If this bastard is killing people and making candles out of them, we find out where he keeps his other money because it's probably going to tell us more than he will tell us if we find out where it is. We offer him that for life behind bars. Then we can take him to Reich. We burn this place down no matter what. Don't you have education, uh, Elisa? I do. 
Yeah, you know automatically that uh, there is no life behind Barter Criminals. He'll be executed. Yeah, he'll just be executed. By son up. <laughs> I have education. I, yeah. I mean, his, his... Oh. well, it's I, yeah. I mean, that's pretty common. I'm just gonna knowledge. check the. Oh, okay. Sorry. He's killing people. I want to check the uh, the hole the hole hidey hole he had and see if there's a, like a secret ledger in there. No. Okay. It's just earth. Okay. Is there any other papers around? I know he. No, nope. I got the books. Journal. No, yeah. the place is journal. You have thoroughly ransacked everything. Just to be clear. Cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's not else to be found here. To be honest, I don't think it, it doesn't sound like it's. How do we put this? Um, assets he could give us that he particularly has. He spoke of investments. So being able to hand us coin for whatever wealth he may have left that was not here, I don't think is a thing. Mm-hmm. We could ask, but I don't think so. It doesn't right. make sense. Well, you can, you know. Uh, well, I'm going to go take a smoke. To. Y'all decide. He be I'm going to walk out <laughs> the Wake front out. door. Let's take a quick break. Mm-hmm. Boy. Um, this place is evil. 